Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. We're doing another review and ratings episode where I review all the games I've been playing in the past two weeks with friends, family, and even solo. We've got eight games on the docket to talk about today. And let me tell you, these were some of the best two weeks of gaming I've had in a long time in terms of playing new games that just really, really stuck with me that are going to get really high ratings. The, the, there are four games on this list that are going to get really high ratings. So those, those are the four games that I'm really excited about. But we're talking about eight total here. We're going to start with my least favorite and go into my favorites. And the first game we're talking about is Space Marine Adventures Labyrinth of the Necrons. Now this is a cooperative dice chucking game. It's a very, very simple, straightforward game. Each person gets a character. That character has so many actions that they can do on their turn, and they have so much range that they can attack the enemies with. Also, each character has a small special ability with them. And the turn order is determined by this initiative deck. And each round, each character is going to go at least twice, but then there's going to be the Necrons that are going to activate so many times each round as well. But the turn order is just random determined by that deck. On your turn, you are just going to do as many actions as your particular character gets, and your actions are either move one or attack, and you can attack within your range, and you're attacking these Necron enemies, and they have so much health. And you're like, I'm attacking this enemy if, if they're in within range. You roll the dice. If you roll to their threshold, whatever that particular enemy is, you beat them. If you don't beat them, nothing happens. Uh... Sometimes the enemies are going to activate as well because they're in the initiative deck. And they're, those are basically usually just going to add more Necrons to the board. And this is a campaign game, or you can play it as one-shots, but it's a three-game campaign. And you're just going around the board trying to find a, get done with certain objectives and then get out of there. This game is going to get a 5.5 rating. I didn't think there was anything like too wrong with the game, but it's not one that I'm going to go back to. I played the three game campaign and I instantly put it in my for sale pile because there, from one game to another, there's not much difference. After you play one game, you've played the game. It is just simply moving, rolling dice, hope you get past that threshold of what the enemy is. If not, there's not much you can do about it. So it's it's nothing special to me, and it's kind of boring. After, like, each of these games only, like, a half an hour. And like I said, I played the three-game campaign, so I played this game for an hour and a half. I was, like, hoping this game would end. Like, I was like, I'll just... After the first game, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll play the second and third game. But it was, it was forcing myself to play it. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the game mechanically. It's just not exciting to me. So, yeah, 5.5 for Space Marine Adventures. Labyrinth of the Necrons. Going on to the next game. The next game is a dexterity game. You're building this tower of fuzzies. The game is called The Fuzzies. And you have this tower of these little balls, these little like cotton balls almost that are colored. And on your turn, you're going to move one of the colored balls from the bottom onto the top area somewhere. And the balls are like slightly sticky to each other. And... The game is, it's basically Jenga, but you've got fuzzy balls instead. Fuzzy balls. <laughs> but yeah, it's its nothing great. You play this game in a couple minutes. I bought this game at Target for 10 bucks on sale. And I was like, oh, I'm, you know, and then I played the game with my son, my nephew, and my sister. We played it like three or four times in a matter of a half an hour. And then we put it away, and I asked the next day and the day after if anybody wanted to play it, and nobody wanted to play it again. So, yeah, six rating for the fuzzies. It's fine. If you're looking for, like, a family-friendly game that's like Jenga, maybe check this one out. But after, like, a half an hour, we were kind of done with the game, totally. So, yep, six rating for the fuzzies. Going on to the next game. The next game is a little card game. This is Sixth Nymph. Now, this is kind of a classic card game, but I had never played it before, actually. And I got this finally, and I played it. And it is a card game that... Every round, every player gets 10 cards, and the cards are just numbers. I think it goes from, like, 1 to, like, 110 or something like that. And everybody is going to pick one of these cards of their hand and simultaneously reveal them. Then you have to place your card uh, in numeric order 
on one of these rows that is closest to your number, but you can't go before it. So if you have a 50 and there's a, a row that's got 47, you'll probably put that 50 on that 47. If ever you are the sixth card, I believe it is, in a row, you have to take all the previous cards and then your card becomes that starting card for that row. You do not want to take cards because cards are going to be worth points at the end of the round. At the, and then you are playing until someone reaches 66 points, that threshold. Then whoever's got the least amount of points wins. And this is just a fun, family-friendly game, you know. And it's really fun revealing the cards and then you're putting these out, you know. You know, if you if I played the 13 and you played the 30, I've got to place mine first, which is going to change up the game. The By the time you place your card, the, the game state, the board might completely change. And it's just a fun, fun game and very simple. You can play this with almost anyone. And I, I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. So a seven rating for six nymphed. Going on to the next game. The next game is a Star Wars themed game. This is Star Wars Villainous, which is the third Villainous game to come out. First there was Disney Villainous, then Marvel Villainous, and now Star Wars Villainous. I had played Disney Villainous years and years ago, once or twice, and I was okay on it. I wasn't a huge fan of it. But there's a Star Wars version, and I like Star Wars, so I'm like, I might as well check it out. In this game, each person is going to play as a villain from, from Star Wars. Like, you've got General Grievous, or Darth Vader, or... A couple other ones. There's five total characters that you can be as, and each person has their own complete objective that they're trying to do. Like if you're playing as uh, General Grievous, you are trying to collect eight lightsabers, and you get these lightsabers by defeating heroes. And Darth Vader is trying to get Anakin, no, Luke Skywalker, into the Emperor's throne room, and then you need the Emperor there too. And there's a couple different things. But each player is going to have their own particular objective. Each player has their own deck, and each player has their own fate deck, which these fate decks are going to get played on to you from other people, and they're going to do bad things to you. And so each turn, you're just going to move your person, your marker, from you have a, a personal board that has like four rooms on it, and these rooms have different actions on them, and they're very straightforward like getting credits that you can use to play a card then you have like play a card action you have the fate action which can where you fate other people to do the bad things to them you have the vanquish action which you can try to get rid of heroes off your board because when you get played heroes onto your board they're going to block off some of the other actions that are on those boards so you want to get rid of them and a lot of those fate decks are going to have intertwining mechanics mechanics that you need for them to come out you know they're a bad thing but they're also a good thing sometimes because you need these bad things to come out so that you can defeat them in order to complete your objectives as far as villainous goes this is i like this more than villainous but not that much more i like i like this game is going to get a 7.5 rating i want to like this game more than i actually do there are fun things in this. I love the asymmetry of all of the players and characters, but that's one of the things the downfall to me is, is because Villainous is always, you know, portrayed as a gateway-style game. To me, it's definitely not a gateway-style game. The, the game itself of Villainous is not that hard, but, you know, you teach Villainous in five to ten minutes or so. Nothing complicated or anything. But then every player has their own objectives, their own like little guide that they have. So you you teach Villainous, and then you have to teach every player their particular character, unless they read through it. But if you're using this as a gateway-style game, I wouldn't recommend it, because it, the asymmetry of it. But I just think they're, they're kind of fun, and I really like the Star Wars faces of this. I usually rate, I, I think I rated Villainous like a 7, 6.5 or 7, but now you got the Star Wars theme, so that acts, that bumps it up for me, maybe that's unfair, but I do just like Star Wars stuff, so a uh, 7.5 rating for Star Wars Villainous. Going into the four games that I said were really, really good at the start of this review, we are starting with Dune Imperium Uprising, which is the sequel of sorts to Dune Imperium, and I won't really get into much of this game. Just know this is a deck building, area control, worker placement game. All all the all the mechanics intertwined with each other really well. If you like uh, Dune Imperium, the first one, there is not much difference from that game to this game. 
They have changed a couple different spots. They've added one or two little new things like spies and stuff like that. But it's almost identical to the original game. If you like Dune Imperium, you like this one. If you like this one, you like Dune Imperium. And this one just feels like a little bit of a patch to the regular Dune Imperium. You know, there were certain spots that weren't really got, going to in the other one. So they're like, okay, we're going to do this with them. And so, yeah, this is going to get a 9 rating. I I love Dune Imperium. So obviously I love Dune Imperium Uprising. If I was going to choose one of them, I would definitely choose this one. Because it feels like it's just like an update, a patched of the other one. But if you own Dune Imperium, it's not like I would recommend you go out you need this one. But if you were going to buy one of them, I would definitely recommend the new one, Dune Imperium Uprising. Because I just think it's a little bit better than that one. I rate both of them a 9. So they're not that much different, but I just think this one's slightly better than the original. So yeah, 9 rating for Dune Imperium Uprising. Going on to the next game, the next game is a campaign expansion for a game that I really like. This is Marvel Champions Next Evolution. This is the sixth campaign expansion for Marvel Champions. I own everything for Marvel Champions, so I have boxes and boxes of game of cards for Marvel Champions. Too much, too much stuff. But just like the, all the other campaigns in Marvel Champions, you get two heroes and you get five villains, five scenarios basically to play against. And I won't go much into details about this one either, but it's very much goes in the same line of all the other campaigns. I, I like the two heroes that come in this one. I like the five scenarios. I think they're pretty good. They're right on line with how difficult I want Marvel Champions to be. I usually like my cooperative games really difficult where I'm like losing and winning like 50-50 kind of. Marvel Champions I like when I win way more than when I lose. I would prefer I win 80 to 90% per, of the time with Marvel Champions. In this game, I never lost a game of... Any of, any of these scenarios. I never lost one of them. So I played through all five, won every one of them. I have zero problem with that. I enjoyed it. Um, so it's right in line with the difficulty setting that I want it to be. But it's not like I steamrolled it. I, I had some hard choices every game, and I eked out a victory each time. Perfect for me. I, I love that style um, difficulty for Marvel Champions. Uh, one thing that this did add was player schemes, which is a new card, new new mechanic in this game, where players can add their own scheme to uh, the, the villain area, and then you're trying to thwart off of that to take up off the thread on there, and every time you complete one of these player schemes, everybody is going to get a reward. So, like, if you get all the, the thread off of this player scheme, maybe everybody gets to play a ally for free which is awesome, especially if you're playing like a three-player game. You get three allies for free if you defeat the scheme. That is awesome. It, it's one of my favorite mechanics that they have introduced in the last year or probably last two years. It's probably my favorite mechanic. I really like the player schemes. So it's going to get a 9 rating because I like everything in this expansion. The heroes are interesting and fun. The villains are nice. I... I like the 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 skill setting for this, the difficulty, and I like the introduction of the player schemes. So nine rating for Marvel Champions Next Evolution. Going into the next game, the next game is the newest Stonemaier game, and I haven't really liked that many Stonemaier games. I wouldn't say there's bad Stonemaier games for me. There was like there's like really like mediocre Stonemaier games for the last several years. This is a period. In a period, this is a worker placement game, but all of your worker workers have a strength level. It's one to four. The stronger your worker is, the better actions that that worker can take. And there is no blocking in this game. If you go to a spot that has a worker on it, that it gets bumped, and that worker that you bumped gets moved up to the next level. Like if it was a level two, it becomes a level three. When you get to a level four, you, uh, you get to go around the board and do these really, really awesome actions at these worker placement spots. Everything's really good, and then when you go to the become the four, it those actions become awesome and game breaking and exciting. And that basically, this is a tile laying game where you are collecting resources, but you can only have resources that ha are on that you can hold because there's a storage system element to this. So there's there's like four different types of tiles that you can go get. 
the year there are the farm tiles which are going to basically get you more resources there are these B tiles that are going to give you like special abilities throughout the game. There are these lightning bolt ones where they give like you an instant effect, whether it's points or some, some kind of awesome effect. Then there are the carved tiles, which are going to give you really big end game points, especially if you plan your game out for them. There are these seed cards, which you can use the seed cards and discard them as a resource, or you can use the ability of that seed card which are really cool game-breaking things. Or you can plant these seed cards underneath your player board, which are going to give you a lot of endgame points as well. This game is going to get a 9 rating. This, I, I have a holy trinity of Stonemaier games. Uh, there's Wingspan, Viticulture, and Scythe. Apiary is now part of that trio of games. And I, I really like Apiary. I've played it six different times now every time every game that i've played of this has felt really different depending on how you're going to build out things and you can go several different strategies there's a lot of variability built into this game from how you're going to collect which tiles you're going to get and which soup the powers you're going to get depending on the seed cards that you get depending on those carved tiles you get your player boards are all different as well you're going to be putting out these tiles on these and getting special rewards for placing your tiles on these specific spots also every player gets a special character ability and there's a ton of special character abilities that are pretty small but they might dictate how you're going to play the game so there is a lot of variability in this game so it's going to get a nine rating um some people might not like the seed cards and the swinginess of the tiles in this game it reminds me a bit like viticulture those visitor cards a lot of people really like those visitor cards but a lot of people don't like them because they're so swinging. It's hard to predict that game sometimes because some people might do a move and you're like, oh my gosh, that you just broke the game. But to me, that is why I like this game so much is because of those big moves that you do. Those seed cards are awesome. Those carvings are awesome. Everything is in this game is just, it reeks of amazing to me. I really like this game, and it's the best game they've come out with to me since 2019, since Wingspan came out, or 18, I can't remember when Wingspan came out, but so for the last four years or so, four or five years, to me this is their best game since Wingspan, so I really like Apiary. So, 9 rating, Apiary. Now going on to the last game of this week, this is a game that I actually already did a full review of, but I did a, I'm going to do a small Small review, watch the bigger review if you're more interested in this. This is Unmatched Adventures Tales to Amaze, which is the newest set that Un Unmatched has come out with. What sets this set apart, though, is this one comes with a cooperative mode, a new cooperative system that they're introducing. The system, this box has two different villains you can play as, and they're two different scenarios. So you're either going to play against the Mothman or the, the alien invaders. Now, each villain gets to come with a couple minions, depending on player count. So if you're playing with three players, the, the the villain gets three of these minions, which are big, powerful minions as well. Every villain and every minion get their own player deck that you're going to be going up against. And it works very, very similar to regular Unmatched. If you know how to play Unmatched, you're going to get into this really, really fast. It's the same system, but when you're going and attacking the enemy, you're just going to flip over one of these cards, and if you're, like, attacking for a three and they flip over a card that says, you know, they got two defense, you know, you're going to hit them for one. They also have all the cool special ability effects on their card like the regular players do. And it's just so good to get into the system. It gives It's going to get a 10 rating. I love this game. I love Unmatched. This gives me a new way to play Unmatched, a good way to play Unmatched, you know, you got your solo mode now, then cooperative, and now compet and competitive as well. And all of this is inter interchangeable. You can take characters from other sets and put them into the cooperative game and verse these guys. Or you can take the, the four heroes that the set comes with as well and take them out and play competitively. You can also use this map as just a competitive mode instead of cooperative mode, which also introduces a fifth player option now because it's a bigger board, so there's a fifth player spot. And so everything in this cooperative mode I liked, everything in this box I liked, from the heroes to the villains, the scenarios, they're fun, the minions are awesome, and they feel just as powerful as the actual villain himself. And so I 
absolutely love this game. I don't know what I would change if I if you asked me what to change in this cooperative mode. I would say nothing because this is about as perfect of a system in a game that I already like as you can make. So kudos to uh, Restoration Games for coming out with this cooperative mode when they definitely didn't have to because Unmatched was already doing perfectly fine. They didn't have to try to make a cooperative mode, but they did and they knocked it out of the park for me. And so yeah, 10 rating for the new Cooperative Unmatched, Unmatched Adventures, Tales to Amaze. And that will complete this reviews and ratings episode. Make sure to comment down below some of your thoughts on some of these games, if you've played them, if you haven't, if you agree with me, if you disagree. Either way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.